Well, I left school very young, um, at 14, and then went to art college, which I managed to spin out for an alarming number of years, and then was unemployed. And then someone said, go and join the script unit at the BBC, which was reading scripts from the public, some of which were set underwater, as I recall. Um, and then someone there said, you, you, you have ability, you should go to the series department. So I became a script editor. I mean, first I had to train and I worked on Doctor Who and various costume dramas and Z cars and things. And I just hated it. I hated um, working for the BBC. I hated the gossip. Um, and I just, it just, I just couldn't fit in. But I love the writers. They seemed to me to be drunk and late and interesting. And um, and I thought I want to be like them, not like them. I want to be like them. <clears throat> but I didn't know if I could write. So I thought, well, I created a show called Angels, which was a, a quite a hard-hitting show about nurses, which was very popular at the time. And so I thought, well, I better cash in the chips I've got because I hadn't been to university. I didn't write stage plays. Um, so I'll write a soap opera. Well, there was only Coronation Street then. So after many trials of sending um, many trial scripts and writing storylines, I eventually was accepted on the street. And there were virtually no women. One was writing it at the time, apart from me, 14 men. And, but that wasn't the problem. Uh, there was no problem. I enjoyed it. It was a great experience. The, the initial problem was coming from the South. Um, so that I had to really um, my spurs and I wrote the street for about three years and Granada were very loyal to their own and then they gave me further work and then it kind of spun on from there. It uh, made me realize I was funny, that I could write funny lines and that sometimes you can use humor to reach an audience and I never really considered that um, because that's the nature of that particular show. You had to compete for scripts in very, very strenuous script meetings. And so I learned to stand my corner and argue. And, and uh, you know, I wanted the commission. Um, you learn to write to deadlines. You learn a kind of, although the most pieces were storylined, but you learn a sort of, a sort of internal structure in scenes. Because if you're writing some of those actors and those characters, they do expect to have pretty good lines. And if you don't use them for the entire scene, but you give them the smart line at the end of the scene, you can get away with it. So I learned, I learned to be canny, I guess, writing that. And I learned a lot of tricks and a lot of good things. But you also pick up very bad habits because you tend not to write the consequences of, of events, the drama itself, um, and everything's a little heightened. And you can't really, it, create, it lives in its own bubble. And I wanted to write about the real world. So um, I left. Well, each script is different, but the main thing is, um, uh, I've used this expression before, which is do not confuse the activity of writing with writing. So you have to think very, very, very carefully, a long time. There is, you only get writer's block if you haven't done the thinking, and, and it's not ready. So you have to think about the story, uh, how the story is going to serve the theme, and how your characters are going to propel the story and have a life of their own at the same time. And the entry point, I suppose, I always try and think about the entry point, which is, have I seen it before? And to start, and this is really important, to start it really confidently, so that the audience immediately feels in a well-researched, authentic world with something happening. And you jettison them into that world, and they, they feel uh, you're in good hands, and they trust you. Uh, research is, in my view, absolutely vital. And, and I mean it in the following way that, I mean, I've written diverse things about motor racing, two women in motor racing, to the police about nurses, to the end of apartheid in South Africa, and currently writing about the Stasi in East Germany. Uh, I, I, I'm not a nurse. I wasn't around with apartheid. How else are you going to know this unless you go and meet the players and talk to them and, and understand the consequences and the world and the specificity and the syntax of that world? And people are curious about those worlds. You know, people are curious as I am. In a sense, you're writing for yourself. If you think that's interesting and compelling, you think, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that the ANC met with, with a, a pro-apartheid people in secret for years before the end of apartheid. How interesting. 
and, and, and they hated each other, you know. So the entry point on that, for example, would be a question of trust. How are these two opposite sides going to trust each other? So if you take that as your theme, then you think, well, how at the very beginning are you going to, going to demonstrate that in the opening few lines? I mean, drama is very expensive. And you are, in a way, when you're going in and pitching an idea, no matter what it is, asking for at least hundreds of thousands of pounds and possibly millions, depending on how many episodes. Uh, if it's to be the latter, the BBC, for example, as a broadcaster, uh, none of the terrestrial broadcasters can manage that sort of budget entirely on their own. Uh, and in, to some extent, why should they? Because they'd be depriving others of their voice. So they, they look for co-production and pre-sales. Now, because of the globalization, the global market, therefore ideas become, as it were, more, more contracted down to those with global reach. So parochial issues that affect our country, the state of the National Health Service, to name but one, um, tend not to get done because that would be extremely expensive to do, to depict that dramatically in a really hard-hitting, long-form way, for example. Um, and it becomes a very difficult problem for them to mount that. Um, and also whether or not they get an audience. The audience um, appetite now is very, very, you know, they've got so much to choose from. And so as the audience's um, appetite for politics now is so um, disenfranchised and disillusioned, the, the audience is the voter and the voter is the audience. So it is, it is not incomprehensible why broadcasters are wary about putting particularly long-form political drama on um, and alienating what the audience or not reaching the audience, and particularly when it is so expensive. Um, as a woman who's had two marriages and several children, I know quite a lot about gender politics because I've lived it. Um, when I started writing in television or when I was in my earlier days, I once said to a director that I would like to meet the actress leading in my six-part political drama. And he said, she doesn't want to meet you, she just wants to nibble my ear. So if you have grown up in that kind of climate and lived through it and seen certain amount of successes in transcending it, but also can recognize it's not fully, the battle is not fully won, it's bound to infiltrate your work. Um, and I think we can see the measure of how things have changed by uh, all the cases that are going on now about the abuse, not just of children, but of women coming forward in various other situations where there was an assumption that women were there for a different reason which had nothing to do with equality. Keep going. You have to remember that you're engaging with an industry. If you were making, if you came up with a design for a car, and, you, and I'm not saying drama is that, but you went to Ford or Chrysler or Honda or whoever and Jaguar and said, here's my design. <clears throat> you're going to get a lot of closed doors before someone says, actually, this is quite interesting, but I, I don't like where you put the wheels and change this and so forth, you know. So you just have to keep going. And as you keep going, you learn your craft, because there is a big craft side of it. Um, and you don't, you just don't really give up once you really feel you have, but you have to be honest with yourself. You know, you have to really feel that you've got it. And uh, really you find that out by having your stuff performed. Then you can look at it yourself and see. Okay, I would take um, the film Five Easy Pieces. I would take the film Don't Look Now. And I think I would take the film I mentioned to you, because I saw it last night, which is a bit of a cheap answer, but um, uh, Two Days, One Night. Because that was a film about a woman struggling to keep her job. Uh, and beautifully shot and beautifully written. And uh, that's a lesson for us all.